all these little tweaks or what's going to make you successful as a trader as opposed to some big old slap in the head. Hello, one day is Thursday, May 23rd, 2024. This is the week in charts. So what are we talking about? Well, obviously, well, before we do that, I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. Appreciate, appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here. Now, let's talk about what we talk about. Well, obviously, current market conditions, I might have to pull my horns in a little bit. I'm getting a little nervous here. Uh, felt a little bit better yesterday. Mm, today, man, eh, not so much. We'll talk about that in one second. Your questions on trading, obviously, your favorite stock and crypto picks. Hold off on your crypto and stock picks until we get to the charts. And we should have plenty of time for that tonight. I want to continue my discussion on a million little things that's going to make you a successful trader. Not to make a lot of sense in just a couple of minutes. That was a disclaimer screen. As you know, you can lose money trading. Or is off to sum it up. All predictions are about the future. And a lot of stuff we have between now and then. Stole that from Greg Morris. All right, just real quick, I want to do a, just a real quick update. No mystery charts this week, but we do have the methodology in action. This was a recommendation uh, not that long ago. SVM Silver's been pretty hot uh, today, notwithstanding. It's pulling back a little bit. We'll take a look at that in just one second. But it was in a nice uptrend. It pulled back to the 30 EMA, and then, then it began to rally out. There were the parameters down there. Entry of 350, stop of 285. IPT of 415. So the entry was here, stop was down here, and the IPT was right here. Now, what I did was I had a initially I had a limit order at the IPT. And I'm going to show you just one minute where I applied a tiny bit of discretion. But anyway, you can see I, I ended up with right about 414, maybe 414 and a half on the trade minus 354 was the entry. My entry was a little bit higher. I'm not sure exactly why. I have to go back and look at my trading journal. I guess I should have done that before the presentation. But probably because it might have spiked up a little bit and came back in and I might have used a little bit of discretion on that entry. But anyway, so I didn't get the full 1,000 bucks on the half first half of the low if you're, Your goal is to make 2% per 100K on the first low. And this is what I like to call my model account, where I, I model the trades that I talk about in the trading service. But anyway, so that's the trades down there. You can see initially 3,000 to open, and then we peeled off 1,500. I peeled off 1,500s, and those are the – that's how it worked out with p &L. Now, by the way, once you hit that initial profit target, your stop comes to break even. Now, I did trail this up a little bit before it was hit. That was a question last week. Do I trail one for one before the initial profit target is hit? And as a general statement, yes. But in more recent years, I've been a little bit more lenient. And if you go in and look at the archives, davelearn.com slash archives, so you can go in and see how I did nudge the stop up a little bit, but not quite one to one on the first loaf. Anyway, there's that trade there. We're going to revisit this in just one second, too, when we get to a million little things. Now, I kind of paraphrased, but I did get a question this week, which is somewhat similar to this one. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. I fought the trend. I'm in a stock that I should not be in. What should I do? Well, the quick, correct answer would be just get out, okay? Now, I know, easier said than done sometimes. But what I often do, because I am occasionally guilty of bad behavior, and it's not necessarily the best practice, but for me, at least from a psychological perspective, it's a somewhat easier decision. And every now and then, uh, not when you throw caution completely to the wind, but every now and then when you should be out and you put in that hard stop just below the market, every now and then you're able to ride out what should only be a correction, okay, if you're trend trading, okay, if you get stopped out, you're stopped out. But if you're in a long, but if something's in a longer term downtrend, as I'll show you in a second, then obviously you need to get out and the chances of reversal are, are much, much, much less. But anyway, I've been in a few before where I've put in that hard stop and to my amazement, I didn't get taken out. And had I, had I just exited at the market, I probably would have been very angry from a psychological standpoint, watching the stock go up over the next six days, six weeks, six years or whatever. 
But anyway, so place a hard stop below the market, especially if you're in something that you need to get out of and you know you need to get out of. And thereby, that's going to have the market, I don't know if it's the right word to use, but it sounds a little funny, thereby letting the market be the final arbiter make the decision for you. And I'm going to come back to the make the decision for you in just one second. But ideally, it, it's hard to make a lot of decisions. And let's say you just would have gotten out. Again, that's probably what you should do over time as you get better and better at it, something that you really need to be out of as opposed to a trend trade that's correcting and it, it's right around where your stop should be and you need to think about getting out. But if you're in something like this, it's a longer term downtrend, you've been hanging on for a long time, even though you shouldn't, okay, then just go in and put in a hard stop. And let's just say you're trading intraday, okay? This works in different time frames, obviously. And you're like, oh God, this thing got away from me. I did not intend for this thing to, to, to go against me so hard. Yeah, the best thing to do if you're super disciplined is just get the F out. But psychologically, it might be a little easier just to put a hard stop in and let that market make the decision for you. Last week, we talked about a million little things. And one thing I forgot to mention was in no particular order, okay? So you'll kind of see them all over the place. And as my week unfolds and as I make mistakes and and have uh, trials and tribulations and all this other stuff. I've been taking more and more notes, so we'll probably end up with about a million and one little things. But I just want to rewind a little bit and give you a little bit of background on on why it's a million little things as opposed to an epiphany. And one thing is that we're very resistant to change. And I think that the the greatest example here was the biggest loser. To those of you who uh, didn't bother watching it, or uh, and I didn't bother watching it, my wife watched a little bit of it. She gets sucked into a little bit of this reality TV every now and then, although she'll tell you that it's 90 Day Fiance and nothing else, but uh, I, I catch her every now and then. <laughs> I guess it's the worst thing she could do. But anyway, the, the game show, so to speak, a reality show, however you want to look at it, was uh, you go in as a big fat bastard, and they do horrible things to you. They make you jog, and you know you shouldn't be jogging if you're a biscuit shy of 300 or 400 or 500, whatever they were. And uh, I mean, I'm a big dude. I I know I shouldn't be jogging. I don't jog because of that. But anyway, they do all these horrible things to them, and they starve them, and they go through these drastic, you know, all these drastic, harsh changes. And guess what happens? They become skinny. Well, guess what happens? When they're no longer on the game show, they become fat again. And in a lot of cases, some people end up fatter than when they started. And there's been a few articles out there called the biggest gainers, the biggest whatever, uh, based on, on this. But the, the bottom line is your body resists drastic change. And that's why all these little tweaks are what's going to make you successful as a trader as opposed to some big old slap in the head or whatever, which you might need. Anyway, uh, the other example I'll talk about, we have, we have some friends that they go on their triannual diets every year. And it's like when they're on their diets, it's like what, you know, we, we now learn to call it when they when we invite them over for dinner or whatever. Are you guys dieting? <laughs> because if they're dieting, they're not a lot of fun. And it's like, they'll go on these diets for three or four weeks or however long. And we kind of avoid them a little bit during that period you know we'll, we'll get the we'll have them come over and they'll be peckish and hungry and crotchety and it's like oh, great you know they're not a lot of whole, whole lot of fun to be around and then a few weeks later as i wrote one of the articles on the website they'll be partying like rock stars we'll see them on facebook with some of their long lost friends and we're like well you know how come we didn't get the benefit of of your of that you know but anyway and more often than not they end up worse than they did before and uh, she's now on Zimpic, and I don't really think she needs to be on on Zimpic. And you go, younger guys might laugh at me, but as you get older, what you consider overweight is uh, kind of kind of goes up uh, significantly. But uh, she looks absolutely fine, and she does not need to be on Zimpic. But anyway, long story endless there. The bottom line is your resistance to change, and and uh, the weight loss it just makes for such a great example, and. Dr. Robert 
Mara, I always forget his name. I hope I didn't butcher that. Anyway, he wrote a book called The Kaizen Way. Read it. He also wrote Mastering Fear, which I might have within, nope, uh, which was also pretty good too. But the, uh, the Kaizen Way was a really good book and it talks about change and all. And I saw him speak at a conference that I was also speaking at. He was the, the psychologist that, that spoke. And uh, one thing that, that he talked about was there was this, and this might, I think this is in the book too, but he had a, a person that came to him that had tried everything in the world to lose weight. And he found out that she liked to watch TV. So he said, well, let's do this. Every commercial, I want you to stand up. That's all I want you to do is stand up during the commercials and sit back down when the commercial's over with. And she did that. And then she started marching during the commercials. And then she started standing up and marching the whole time she watched TV or whatever the case may be. Next thing you know, she's running. And then she ended up running marathons. And obviously, she lost all the weight. And, and she was able to keep it off, too. And she just made these little bitty changes. And that's kind of the secret to life is a bunch of little trade changes and get in the routine or something like um I, I i rarely miss a workout now and the old me would always put it off and always have an excuse or whatever but i just kind of make it i made it such a habit just every day i just do it and initially what got me into that habit was i had two friends that i worked out with and they would give you a hard time <laughs> you know if you if you cut a workout you know it, it Obviously, work excuses aside, they, they give you yeah, guys are guys are harsh on on each other. You know, women are like, "I wish you just treat me like one of the guys." Like, no, not your dog, Danny. Anyway, recapping last week, you want to document your trading. That's number three forty nine five nine five. Number six hundred ninety two thousand three hundred one. Document your life, and that's through the morning pages, and that's gonna change your life. By the way, go in and watch last week's presentation. And we kind of did a gentle introduction, talked a lot about documentation and number 302,874 was in general, don't buy a market below the 30 EMA. And it's interesting. It's it, that simple little rule. And, and, and I noticed someone got themselves into a little bit of trouble and last week and had they not bought a market that was clearly way below 30, they wouldn't have got themselves in trouble. I'm not saying it's going to keep you out of all trouble, but it's going to keep you out of a lot of trouble. Number 590,088, set limit orders when necessary. Now, sometimes, as I've talked about before, you you don't always want that limit order in place never to enter a trade unless you're doing an option or something like that where you want to be in but you don't want to overpay but as far as initial profit target sometimes you might want to put a limit order in if something is is has gotten there fairly quickly let's say you get in a stock on monday and on like wednesday it's almost there just put that limit order in just in case it spikes up to, to go ahead and, and pay you in other cases, you might want to use a little discretion and squeeze out a, a little more profits on that initial profit target. But sometimes you want you want to put in that hard limit order just so you can get paid on a spike. And then number 561,047 is use a small amount of discretion when necessary. In other words, don't split hair. So getting back to the SDM trade, my initial profit target was 415. And it was rallying up kind of nicely, and then it kind of stalled out a little bit. So I put in a hard limit order, uh, actually place the order. When I say a hard order, I mean actually place the order at 415. Now, it was having a really hard time getting to 415. So I went ahead and I left the limit order on. And while it was on, just a quick little trick here. Um, I don't know how it works with other brokerages, but if you do a cancel and replace, you can, that order is still working until you actually hit send on the new order. So every now and then I'll have that up and I'll leave it up and I'll just wait to see if I get paid on that limit order. And if it goes for a little while and it starts backing off a little bit, I'll just go ahead and say, you know what? I'm not gonna split hairs. I'll go ahead and pull the trigger. So in this particular case, this, 
limit order for 1500 I made the change and I just changed it to at the market and hit enter and I got out slightly lower for 14 and a half is how it worked out all right number five hundred and ninety thousand oh eighty eight announce your orders now this is this one sounds a little quirky but just bear with me for a second here let me go back to my CTA day. So back in the day when I first started trading commodities, you there weren't these online brokers. They 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 came on shortly thereafter. That's showing how old how old I am. But you had a voice broker, and uh, and there was actually a beauty to having a voice broker. I remember one time I called in and I loosened the stop instead of tighten it, and the lady who took my order actually said. You know, you're loosening this stop instead of tightening, tightening it, which is a mortal sin. So just having that person out there, it was like, you know what? I am doing something I should be doing. But anyway, you you read the order to them with intent. You know, it's like I need to. It's like I'd like to buy. That's buy. It's purchase. Ten contracts. That's one zero. That's ten. You know, however, of November Thanksgiving crude at the market. And November Thanksgiving, so they know that okay. So when's Thanksgiving? It's in November. So make sure they got the right month down. One time I said October Halloween crude, and they laughed at me. I guess nobody says Halloween for October. But anyway, so the reason I'm saying this is you'd be surprised how many times you fat fee an order, and 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 you know it's a million little things. And in case in point, I'm gonna I'm gonna admit something here to you. I I lost money today in Lab D, okay? And if you plot Lab D, you're gonna be like, mm, you know, a, a monkey could could have made money in that, right? Well, the reason was I thought I was selling something else and I ended up selling Lab D. Had I followed my own little rule here and announced that, hey, I'm selling this Lab D, I'm selling, you know, whatever, SQQQ instead of Lab D. I wanna sell that sell, a thousand SQQQ is like, well, hang on, Dave, wait a minute. You know, are you in the right stock even or ETF? So anyway, as silly as this sounds, especially if you're by yourself, announce your order out loud. And and the thing that's kind of strange here, and 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 this is a million little things, and, and I can't emphasize how important this is, these brokerages all the time change things, okay? And sometimes it's it's under the guise of paternalism. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? And it's like, yeah. And I'm used to clicking three times for you. Sure, 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 sure. Like on a, a browser-based broker. And um, so there's been times where they put like an extra thing in there, you know, warning me that Vito or whatever is a cryptocurrency. And like, I'll see it, something like Vito take off. And I'm like, okay, let me just let me just pick up some of that, you know? And I watch my screens. I'm like, whoa, I'm making a lot of money on that. Let me go see how that's doing. And then it'll be sitting there just blinking, waiting for me to click one more little thing that had to be clicked. I, I was so used to clicking, you know, click, 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 and I'm in. Now I have to check off another stupid little box. So announcing your orders out loud makes a lot of sense. And it's such a little bitty thing you can do. And Today was modestly profitable for me on the on the intraday stuff, but it would have been much 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 better had I not fat fingered and and lost on Lab D. That would have been my biggest win of the day. Anyway, confession time, right? Number seven hundred and seventy four thousand one hundred three. Always do your analysis, even though nothing will likely come from it. How many times have I told you? People will email me and say, Dave, I'm not seeing a whole lot going on. I'm going on vacation or I'm going to take a break from the service. I'm still going to remain a client. I'm still going to stay on the service, but I don't see anything happening for a while. And then later that day, that night, actually, I'll be doing my analysis and I'll find one or two stocks that become two of the biggest, one or two of the biggest winners of the entire year. And, and without those two, the probably would do okay, but not nearly as well because the methodology does require an outlier to really make good money. So you always have to do your analysis and I don't want to come across holier than now. And that's why you start doing these these things is like, hey, I'm Dave Landry. And all of a sudden it's like, oh yeah, fat finger order day and I did this and did that. It becomes a bit of a confession time. But anyway, 
along the confessions a couple of weeks ago, I showed you this crypto trade. Like, hey, I'm Dave Landry. Look at that. It, I got in, and within like a day, I hit the IPT, came back down, stopped me out of the remainder, break even. Who cares? Okay. Made a little money on it. Next. See how easy it is? And then what happened? Well, this thing sets up again, has a nice little pullback, and then takes off without me. And that might be, hopefully it's not, but that might be the real, the real deal, the real move. Because in this particular case, I would have taken this trade in crypto. And it would have, you know, hypothetically, right? Well, what would the world be without hypothetical questions? And I think that's right with the W who first said that. But anyway, that's a that's kind of a bummer there. And and you can see that this isn't this isn't about this magical setup. It isn't about Big Dave's money management, his hybrid approach to the market and all these G Wiz things. It's about paying attention and doing your homework, even though crypto became a little lackluster. It's like, ah, there's nothing going on in crypto. Why even bother? Well, you should. And, you know, from a selfish standpoint, it's great that I have this trading service because it forces me to do this analysis every day, the stock analysis, that is. And if I weren't doing a trading service, especially on a shitty day, I'd probably just go home and say, oh, the hell with it, you know? So 83,614, let the market make decisions for you. So here we have two trades that won the service at the same day, okay? So... This was July last year, and I first showed this one on the 6th, and then I first showed the, the one to the right on the 24th, but I believe the one that I grabbed, davelander.com slash archives, was July 27th. But anyway, so there are the parameters. So the entry down here was right here on this one, and to the right was right there on that one. So let's move this out the way. So there's your entry there, and there's your entry there. Now, what happened? The one on the left triggered and was still in it, barely. But we're hanging on. We're going to see what happens. I think the stop is right around 67 and a half, if memory serves. So we're getting dangerously close to that. And that comes with the territory. You have to be willing to ride out these longer-term trends. That's why we take partial profits. That's why we trail a stop. And that's why we give it a little room on those trailing stops to hopefully, I know you said hope, but hopefully stay in position a long, long time. And I was hoping to make at least a year with this one. So I could say, well, look, we got in this one a year ago. So didn't, I don't want to look like I'm in and out like the rat going for the cocaine. Although when I mentioned intraday trading, I, I do sound a little bit <laughs> psychotic like that. But anyway, you can see 57%, better than the poke in the eye, probably about 55% now, maybe a little bit less, but still a decent trade nonetheless. And we took partial profits along the way. And the position size is half of what it was initially. Now, take a look at the, the one on the right. Notice that it, it didn't get anywhere near the entry and imploded and is down 80%. Somebody a while back just started up the service. And the first thing I recommended, and it worked out, thank God, was the first thing that they saw was SVM, the silver stock. And they told me like uh, the next day, yeah, I'm in that SVM. Thank you for that. I'm like, well, hang on. <laughs> it never triggered. You should have. You should not be in it. Now, thank God it worked out. But it could have easily did like this stock here and absolutely imploded. And as I've said a thousand times, I'll probably get an email on this one. You know, maybe, maybe in a few weeks and say, Dave, what should I do with that turd you recommended? LTCH. And I'll look at the chart and go. I would never recommend a stock that's going straight down like this one. And they'll say, yes, you did. And I'll go back and say, well, I guess I did, but it never triggered. So that's coming back once again to let that market, let the market make decisions for you. Now that's, there's so many different other ways you could let the market make decisions for you. Number 418,364 would be use a hard stop to exit any market that you need to be out of, as I discussed earlier which is another one of those, again, let the market make decisions for you. So again, if you're in a stock, especially like this, where you fought the trend and you need to get out and you just, you've been in it so long, it's like, oh, if I get out, it's just going to piss me off and go straight back out. Well, put a hard stop in if you don't have enough discipline to just get out and see what happens.
number 73,111. You want to refer to your setup gauge on each trade. Feel free to steal my setup gauge here. Ideally, you want to be taking trades over here in the F yeah quadrant. And how do you know if it's F yeah? Well, when you see the trade, you should get pretty excited and you'd feel like an idiot if you didn't take it, right? And if you lose on the trade and you shrug your shoulders and say, shit happens, what the hell, I don't care. That was an F yeah trade. And that's when you start to reach that true enlightenment. When you do everything correctly, it doesn't work out. But you're like, next, I'm going to do the same exact thing next time, and it'll work out, as long as you're not becoming the definition of insanity. But make sure it truly is an F, yeah, trade. Sakota once said, and, and I've been credited saying it, but no, I've quoted Sakota so many times. It's kind of like all my uh, Linda Raskyisms that I used to talk about and still do on occasion. But Dakota once said, you, you can't confuse intuition with intuition. And that one kind of haunts me sometimes because sometimes it's like, oh, that looks great. And I just jump in. And then I realize, well, wait a minute. It didn't, doesn't really look that great. It was more of a, an emotional, a super emotional trade. All trades are emotional. All decisions are emotional. That's neurology. We can get into that it's, again at some point if you like. But the bottom line is if you really do have an FEA trade, then number 73,111, Explain why this is an F yes setup. Now, let's say you're, you're taking only F yes setups. You're, you're doing what I'm saying, and you keep losing, 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 losing. Well, maybe you need to back off a little bit and analyze the market and then analyze all your setups to make sure they truly were F yes setups. And I bet you 100 bucks, you'll probably find a lot of mistakes, and you'll, find, you'll probably realize that it wasn't an F yes setup. Go through enough of those cycles and then if you're if you lose on all your f yes then maybe you've become the definition of insanity but you won't if they truly are f yes setups every now and then of course you will but go ahead and explain this f yes setup as if you were proclaiming it to the world sort of like sell me on your setup now if you're alone as most of us are as traders then just say it out loud. It sounds, it's a little weird and quirky at first, but once you get used to it, it's really, it's really not that strange, but say, okay, I like this setup because, and if you are to post something and, and feel free, if you're in, face, in the Facebook group, Dave Landry's Trend Traders, you have to be a goal member to participate. But if you are in the group, uh, thank you, but you could put a trade, feel free to throw trades out there. I'll be happy to look at them. My members would love for you to do that, right? And But sell us on your setup. Tell us why you like it so we see what you're seeing. And if you are able to kind of proclaim it to the world, so to speak, then maybe you might have a pretty good setup. So I grabbed one from, I think this was the same day or right around the same day that uh, I had recommended the KNF, and this one since stopped out, but it was a pretty good trade. And it just so happened to be the one I was looking at, but you had trend acceleration. Notice that it was kind of gradually working its way higher, and then it began to accelerate higher. What else did you have? You had persistency. And if you go in and watch the archives to these, if you can't sleep at night, but it's, it's a great exercise if I say so myself, it, it's a one getting to my head, seeing how I think about markets, and two, I think you'll learn a lot about the process of okay, of stock selection. It's got acceleration, it's got persistency. It's a it's a nice little TKO, is what I said. <laughs> now another thing of these one little million things, and I forget the number of that one. We'll have to give it a number. But one is to set alarms. So I grabbed the alarms off my trading desk. And this one's near the open. And you'd be surprised how many times you'll completely miss the open if you don't have an alarm to wake you up and let you know that, hey, I need to watch this open. And at 825, which is five minutes before the market opens, that's when I check for opening gap reversals. Now, 99 out of 100 days, and and it all depends. Maybe tomorrow we'll have a few. But more often than not, there's no 
opening at reversals or as we now call them ogres to trade but that's my heads up hey you got five minutes for the open check your ogres check a million little things check your spreadsheet check your plan for the day you need to add those in to a million little things right so let's say it's friday and i have some futures on or it would be less common but maybe i have some stock that i need to get out of and after hours or an etf or something that i forgot to get out of or didn't have enough time to get out i'll set an alarm so i can get out before the after hours trading closes now at 240 i have what i call my es240 strategy and i haven't fleshed it out so i'm not hiding anything that's proprietary or secret from you it's just an observation and it's a grind the, the what i found is right around that 240 in in about 245 they stopped taking orders for the zero dte e-mini options i don't look at those e-mini options at all until 20 minutes before the close and what you're going to find is 10 or 15 points out from where you are where the strike where you're where the market is on cash those options sometimes could be really cheap now some days you probably don't want to buy them because the market is just not moving at all but there's other days where maybe the market is going in one direction a little overbought oversold whatever the case may be and you can play those options and sometimes you can play both sides relatively cheaply and when i'm talking cheap i'm talking cheap like ten dollars fifteen dollars an option no i'm sorry even less than that maybe like uh 750 an option literally seven dollars and fifty cents now these are out of the money they're lottery tickets they're they're likely more than likely to expire worthless but i'll put in an order for a two times on these and again i have this is kind of a half-baked strategy at this point in time and it's like you lose 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 bam you hit it out the park and then you lose 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 so it's um Psychologically, it's kind of a hard strategy. You almost have to see your, just see yourself as kind of pissing the money away when you do it. And I'm kind of nickel and dime in this. I'm not putting a lot of money into it. And I don't recommend you either until I flesh it out, until at least I flesh it out a little bit more, or maybe you figure it out or see if there's something something there. Um, the secret sauce, I think, is is maybe there's a, a filter or something. And, and right now, it's just kind of feel like, okay, I think this market can easily move 10 points doesn't have to go in the money it just has to go far enough for me to get a double and then i have take off half of those contracts with a limit order and every now and then and not that often again i don't want to sell you on this uh, because it, it, it is kind of a dangerous thing but every now and then i'll have one go into money and that's when you really get paid you'll get paid like 10 to 1 or 20 to 1 on these silly little contracts but anyway that's why that alarm is set I there's been many many days since I've been watching those where it, and I know what would the world be without hypothetical questions, but it seems or without hypotheticals, it seems like on some of those days I completely forgot it would have been the mother of all opportunities. The S and P futures ripped 20 or 30 points in those last 20 minutes. But anyway, I, it's something I haven't fleshed out. I'd love to talk with somebody who understands options. And uh, maybe I'm out in left field on this, and and I haven't tracked my performance here in a while. It's like it, you can tell that I haven't been doing well, and it's like whenever I knock it out the park, then I start tracking the performance again to uh, to see if it's all worthwhile. But it's nickel and dime stuff. I know it can add up. You can't get a little bit pregnant, so don't beat me up too much on that. But I th I think there's something there. I just haven't completely figured it out. But anyway, long story endless. That's why I set that alarm. 2:55 my time. I'm on Central Time is five minutes before the close so that wakes me up okay what do i have to close out what are my positions and every now and then this is another one of those dangerous things and i don't want to sell you on this but every now and then right around the close today didn't work but it, i didn't do anything believe me but let's say today that the semiconductors were a route one day uh one way all day long okay shorts let's say the semiconductors just absolutely imploded all day nvidia hit its earnings and then absolutely imploded or whatever happens then like right towards the close you might have some short covering or something and i call it the race to the finish 
And those last five minutes, sometimes you could put on a trade, fairly low risk trade, and hold them for a couple of minutes going into the close. And, and again, it's nothing that I'm going to uh, write about or talk about and suggest you do, but it's just up to, an observation you might want to check out. Um, I used to have this 230 set. Now I have enough time, usually when I'm doing this ES240, I probably should turn this alarm back on. But this is when I would do my IPO analysis. And I, I probably will turn that back on because there, there are days where I forget to do my IPO analysis. All right, number 878,034, Embrace Acrasia. Now, this comes from an article that I wrote a while back, and I'm always putting this in my newsletter because it's, it's one of my favorite articles. I probably need to reread it and make sure it's uh, it's correct, grammar, grammatically correct, if that's a word. Not following through on what you set out to do. My, in my peeling, uh, in my peeling the trading psychology onion, I discovered there's a name for straying from the from the longer term, shorter term. These short term urges, which take away from our longer term goals, are known as a crazy. And, and and again, dieting kind of comes into it. It's like, well, I'm just going to eat this bag of chips today and I'll start my diet tomorrow. It's like you have these longer term goals in mind, but you kind of sabotage yourself much, much shorter term. And I think all these these little million things, these million little things all kind of dovetails into that and kind of wakes you up to where you're losing sight of your longer term goals by not taking care of what you need to do shorter term. But anyway, that's called acrasia. And I've written quite a bit on this and I've done complete presentations, but acrasia is a state of mind which someone acts against their better judgment through the weakness of will. And a lot of procrastination could be explained as acrasia. Now, James Clear, he wrote a pretty good book. It's a really good book. And it's even better if I would actually follow it. Again, I can't reach my books. But uh, I think it's called um, something about, uh, I forget the name of it, Good Habits or something. Anybody know, anybody know the uh, Acrasia one? I'll put it in post. But anyway, it's a pretty good book. It's probably better than I'm saying. I need to reread it. And if I actually did what he said, it would probably be fantastic. But Acrasia is a state of acting, the power of habit habits. What's the name of that book? A crazy state of acting against your better judgment. It is when you do one thing, even though you know you should do something else. Well, Livermore once said, a trader makes mistakes and knows he is making them. I received an email from somebody years ago that said, I feel like Paul, the apostle Paul, I know not to do these things, but I do them anyway, okay? And it's just you sometimes you you know you're doing the wrong thing, but you do it anyway. So recognize that you might be doing that little thing. And and the small doing the wrong thing shorter term adds up longer term. And you're like, for some reason, you reason and there's a time inconsistency. And I've I've gotten to I've gotten a little deeper to this in the past. I probably need to reread Mr. Clear's book. But you you kind of like, oh, I'm just gonna do it this time. And and tomorrow I'm gonna be disciplined and I'm gonna honor my stops. I'm not gonna take mediocre setups and only take FPS setups, et cetera. A crazy is what prevents you from following through on what you set out to do. Now, this was part of a much bigger presentation I did a while back, and I was looking at some of those slides earlier today. And again, there's the, the time inconsistency is is a very important thing. I think one of the examples there is if I offered you $500 tomorrow or $505, I kind of backed myself into something I didn't want really to get into tonight. But the time in inconsistency, it's it's like a, a $5 difference and a one, it's only one day, but it's like the you you don't want to wait that that length of time. So you sacrifice the five bucks. I forget how it goes. I'll work it out and post again. <laughs> one point I wanted to get to, and I'll probably cut all that out, but the one point I did want to get to is, is that discipline gets used up. If 
the, the gym again makes a great example. I'm going to go to the gym after I work today. Well, by the time you get done with work, especially if the shit hit the fan or God knows what happened, you're like, you know what? I'm too tired to go to the gym. I'll go to the gym tomorrow after work. So you fully intended on going to the gym, but that discipline got used up throughout the day. You know, again, it's confession time. There's been days where there's nothing to do in the market, just chops around all day, all day, all day, all day, all day. And I'm doing my other work, staying busy, being a good little trend following moron. There's nothing to do over there, just so work on something over here. And then toward the end of the day, I just can't stand it. I feel like not can't stand it, like I have to take this trade. Can't stand it. I'm taking a trade out of boredom or for recreation or uh, it's S and G, it's no big deal. I'll sweep it under the rug if it doesn't work. And that's that discipline getting used up. And all this dovetails in with Acrasia. And I didn't mean to get into all this, but I probably should have uh, put the rest of the slides in here. Set my alarm wrong for Fed meeting the other day so I could get out of the day trades before the meeting notes came out. It cost myself, except for circle time, hour late. Yeah, Jeff, and, and that's and that's okay. I'm glad you mentioned that. So let's say you're putting on an intraday trade and the Fed announcement's coming out later in the day. You probably need to close down that trade before that Fed announcement because that market's going to get jerked around like crazy. So he set an alarm, but the million little thing he could have done maybe was announce that alarm out loud, okay? So it was set for central time instead of Eastern or whatever the case may be. So if he, and I don't know how the, his alarm works, but he, he could have said, I, Jeff, have just set an alarm to remind me to get out of my positions before the Fed meeting for... 12 o'clock central time is like, oh, 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 hang on, hang on, wait a minute. It needs to be one o'clock central time or whatever the case may be. Hey, if you're liking this video and you're watching it on YouTube, live on YouTube, then like this video. If you don't like it, go have no fun somewhere else. Subscribe too. If you're watching the recording on YouTube, please subscribe too. All right, let's hop into crypto. Let me see if we have any questions here. All right, good. We're caught up. So I'm going to hop over to crypto and then we'll we'll get into stocks. I don't there's not a whole lot happening in crypto, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here unless you guys and girls want me to look at something in particular. Let's just take a look at let's take a look at the big boys first. So I I thought they were already Ethereum ETFs. I don't know why they there was such an excitement over Ethereum, but Ethereum had been underperforming Bitcoin for a long, 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 long time. And then it just went straight up. And that's Ethereum versus Bitcoin. Here's Ethereum. Like I said, in the market a minute, a few days ago, somebody slapped it in the ass. Look at that. It just went straight up out of nowhere. So that's interesting to say the least. Bitcoin, Bitcoin's a bit of a bummer because it was kind of taken off and now it stalled out before getting back to its old highs. And I guess all the people who poo-pooed it from $800 and, or even before, uh, they're gonna poo-poo it again and tell you that, yep, you see I'm right. It is, it is garbage, it is made up, it is fake. Well, who cares? I watched the interview with the dude that was the first uh, transaction. I think the book was called Digital Gold. I listened to it on audio. It was okay. It was interesting. It, uh, some of it really interesting. And new ETF announced for ETHE. Yeah, but didn't they already have one? Wasn't it ETHE to begin with? Or it, was, it wasn't officially an ETF. It was just like a, um, a regular stock or pink sheet stock or whatever. Anyway. I saw the interview with the guy on Twitter, or X, and he bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. And they were trying to, I guess, proof of concept, like, okay, we're going to use this digital money. And it's like, so how are we going to how are we going to buy something or, or whatever? How are we going to use this digital money? And 
one of the guys said, if you give me 10,000 Bitcoins, I will give you two pizzas. Well, he did it. And uh, the guy who got the Bitcoin called Domino's or whoever it was, uh, might've been Papa John's. And there, there's a picture of the pizzas in the interview. It was actually two pizzas and 10,000 Bitcoin. So I did the math in my head. I think that's like $700, $700 million. So those pizzas were about $350 million each in today's dollars. So I hope that was really, really good, good pizza. Okay, so Fritchie said, so okay, so that was the ETF announcement. I saw something about an ETF announcement. That's like I thought they already had ETFs on that. So that's uh that's interesting. And that's that's what kind of lit a fire under Ethereum. So that's kind of cool. Uh the only one I'm long right now, kind of a bit of a flyer, is just this VONK because it was going up. But I'm not long any other ones. As I said before, when crypto is running, and I haven't done enough analysis today, by the way. See, I'm violating my rule. But when it's really running, that looks pretty good, O-N-D-O. Sometimes you can just come in here and buy the ones that are banging out new highs. And, of course, use a, a profit target on that and stop yourself out. This one looks okay, too, H-I-G-H. -H. So I've got a little thing on that. What was that one a second ago? I think I could do this one. So let me uh let me just buy a little bit of that. So we get get a trade on here. So see, I should have been doing my analysis. I should saw this, should have seen this ONDO taken off. Okay, it's funny doing these webinars. Everything looks good sometimes. <laughs> and I'm just gonna buy at the market. All right, let's do cash. All right, at the market. Bam. Let me give you my fill. I am filled at a dollar six one four one, and I'm going to set an IPT at twenty percent higher. Now, as I've said before, at some point in time, maybe I need to look at the volatility of the market and set my initial profit targets and such accordingly. One point oh. Six one four one times one point two. So my IPT is one twenty seven. So we'll put an IPT in here at one twenty seven, and I'll follow up on this one like we did the other one. I think it was ABT it was the one I did in the webinar, or one of the ones I did in the webinar last time. And hopefully it works again. I know I just said hope, but let me put this limit order in, and then if there's any individual stocks you want me to look at, start typing them in now. I'm going to go through my market analysis fairly quickly, but there are some things I really want to point out, which, as I said earlier, to, um, today's action just is a bit of a bummer, kind of changes things. All right, so I'm going to sell half of that at 127. My order's in place, and maybe if time allows, we'll check it by the end of the webinar and see how it works. I would recommend that you put all of your kids and grandkids college funds into ONDO. That was a joke. <laughs> I was with somebody once on business and they were serious the whole weekend. And, and then the end, the, uh, he made a joke and he said, uh, <laughs> my wife, she really doesn't mind when I go away because when I get back home, I watch a kid for a few days and she could go spend some time with a boyfriend. You know, I looked at him. He said, that was a joke. All right, let's take a look at the market. We'll take a look at the piece first, obviously. Now, again, if you look at my service and if you look at some of the market in the minutes, you'll see that I've been pretty bullish as of late because the market is right at these all time highs. Dollar seven, somebody's putting a college fund in. There it goes, dollar seven. Keep going, come on. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> Hang on a second. You ever see those videos? <laughs> They've got the little chart. They blow on it. Sometimes when crypto is really running, I'll be out to dinner with my wife and I'll start doing that. Anyway, uh, I am a nerd. Opening gap reversal in the P's. This is a bit of a bummer, okay? Not the end of the world. Like As I was telling my clients tonight, when sometimes when you have a double top, it rarely works in a textbook kind of manner. 
sometimes it overshoots and then comes back in. And psychologically, that makes a lot of sense because that sucks in people saying, oh, it's not a double top, everything is fine. So that's a little bit of concern. Now, if you go in and look at like the TFM 10% zones, everything is still fine there longer term everything is fine we're just we're just one afternoon or one day away from brand new highs once again so i wouldn't i wouldn't freak out just yet but i would pay attention if we come back in below this prior peak it would not necessarily mean a bear market but it would suggest that we need to pay attention to what's happening nasdaq not quite as bad because the nasdaq has broken away a little bit further. I'm watching that stupid, stupid crypto pair. <laughs> it's broken out a little further, but you can see open a gap reversal there. That's fairly ugly. Only down a little bit more than 30 percent. No big whoop, right? But it's the way it did it that's a little bit of concern. But not again, not the end of the world. As long as the market's not too far away from all-time highs, I'm not going to get too excited. But I will pay attention or pay more careful attention when something like that occurs, when it gets to stall out a little bit. Take a look at the Rusty. Rusty got whacked. Now, I know the Rusty's been a pain in the buttocks forever. It's kind of a complex head and shoulders, wide and loose range, whatever you want to call it. And it's below this other wide and loose range. Let me shut down this crypto screen because I'm going to watch that all night. Um, or doing the webinar, at least. <laughs> but you can see it got whacked in here. So Russell just remains a bit of a bummer. Let's take a look at let's take a look at gold first, and then let's take a look at some areas that aren't doing so hot. Gold, the commodity, got whacked a little bit in here. Minor double top, okay. And I, I wouldn't rush out and sell gold right away, but that is a little bit of a concern that it's beginning to to lose a little bit of its luster, so to speak. The gold stocks actually still look pretty good so far. They've just pulled back in here, and I'm not seeing a lot of setups just yet but I'm looking for some just in case, but we we do need to keep an eye on gold to see if it weakens any. Now, some areas still doing pretty good with the market just off all time highs. Today, now we're standing. Infrastructure got whacked, but so far it's in a nice uptrend, but some areas are looking kind of ugly. Let's take a look at defense first. Defense looks okay. This just looks like a TKO kind of move. It's still in a pretty decent trend, so let's not get too excited about that. But when you look at like the transports, you can see they've pulled back in here. Now they're beginning to roll over. So that's an inverted cup and handle. That is not a good thing. Let's take a look at some other areas in here. Drugs. Drugs made it all the way back to new highs, but are stalling out a little bit at those prior highs. Again, like some of the other areas at the old highs, one or two big updates would make all the difference in the world. But obviously that would have to happen. Retail's a bit of a bummer. It's pulled back a little bit, then it's rolled back over. Silver still looks pretty good. So far, silver's just pulling back. Again, we're long SVM. Now, let's take a look at the semis. Okay. As a trend follower, I'm not going to argue with all-time highs, okay? Nor should you. But the only thing is it did that opening gap reversal deal, and um, I, I stole somebody's meme today. Um and it was a, a guy with a with a rather large woman <laughs> on his shoulders. And uh, I think printed across him was like, uh, you know, it's like the world's economy. And then across his forehead was printed uh, NVIDIA, NVDA. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I was really nervous about NVIDIA today. I was worried that this thing would come come back in. And but so far it did gap open and held on to most of its gains i mean it's off significantly obviously but it's still still a decent day nonetheless nine percent for this big fat stock i don't know how much that is in dollars and if somebody could do that math that would be awesome and just let me know but i bet it's a it's a bazillion what, what did somebody say the other day i'm giving a speech a million bazillion dollars it's like okay uh what else is happening here so there's there's always something to worry about, obviously, but I am somewhat concerned with some of these areas. The home builders, they made it back to their old highs almost, and then now they're beginning to stall out and roll over. So that's looking a little toppy. A lot of areas like communications made it back to their old highs and then stalling out. So I'd like to see these areas bust out and not look back. Energies have been looking questionable for a while. You can see they're kind of rolling over. 
in here. Financials, they made it back to the old highs and now they're stalling out. That has a bit of a double top look to it. Now, don't freak out just yet, but you do want to pay attention and you do want to watch these areas like software. You can see stalling out the prior highs in here. If you look at the MG software, it's a little bit cleaner chart. Let's see if I can find it on the fly. I haven't given completely up on my, somebody asked me to go toward more, more towards the ETFs and I've been doing that over the last six months or so. But I still, I still do like these media general groups, but you can see this one's a little bit more obvious. You've kind of got this, it has a bit of a cup and handle look and looked like it was gonna push up in that handle. Now it's stalling out a little bit and that's shy of the prior highs of here. So that's a bit of a bummer. So check back often, and, and obviously I'm looking at it every day, all day, and things change quickly, but today I would put in the ugly column, and as a trend follower, if you string together a bunch of ugly days, then things begin to get ugly. If you string together, string together a bunch of good days, then things are doing well. All right, Keith wants to know about Next, N-E-X-T. Yeah, that looks interesting. Let's see what we got. Oh, yeah. Longer term, though, lots of problems. Okay. If I was just seeing this, except for this couple of crazy bars in here, but for the most part, I'd say, yeah, that looks pretty good, Keith. And it's kind of pulling back. I'd probably use a little bit more pullback. But when I back it out, you can see it's got all this fluff and overhead supply and wide and loose trading. So I would leave that alone. And, and sometimes you you end up, for lack of a better way of explaining it, you end up with these stocks that trade in chunks, okay? Like, like Nvidia has has trended in more recent times, obviously, but some stocks just the you know, K and F we talked about earlier, you know that kind of that trends. But I can't think. Of, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. Uh, Intuitive Surgical, maybe. Some stocks just kind of trade in chunks, and it's hard to really do anything with them. Well, I'm just making a mockery out of me but back in the day you could see it's up it's down it's up it's down it's up it's down and some stocks just make these huge jumps on earnings and then that's it but this is one that's that's never been easy to trade intuitive at least in more recent times and i, I would put your stock in that kind of uh in that class of stocks and just kind of trades in these chunks and all over the place so i think you could probably find something better in bbk yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, who gave me that one? John Ross, of course. Uh, John's our resident IPO expert. The only thing I could possibly pick apart, and I'm sure you already know this, is the, the range could be a little bit better, but the range isn't bad, okay? It could be a little bit better. This is only a three-point run in here. It is an IPO. It's a bank, eh, you know, but Dave, I thought you didn't care. Well, usually I don't. With IPOs, I do like to see a little bit of an excitement happening, but I'm, I'm going to have to say this looks pretty good. Now, it's a little bit on the thin side, okay? And then the other thing is, remember I talked about the range? The HV is only 19, so it's a little low on the HV. What's the spiders right now? 15? 11, okay? So it, it's a little bit more volatile in the market, but not much. But yeah, overall, I think that looks pretty good. I just... I would pass personally, volume's a little light again. I would pass probably based on the HV. I'd like to see a little bit more range happening. But as a general statement, like if you just kind of, like if I was just glancing at this chart, it would it would jump out at me as a good looking stock, okay? Because you're up at brand new, it made it all time highs, fairly deep pullback, could actually use a little bit deeper pullback, but it looks pretty darn good. But again, the range is a little small. So that's the, uh, that's the only thing I could pick apart on that one. All right, let me check my YouTube brethren. YouTube brethren, that's hard to say. And see if anybody's, this is live. Yes, it is live, K-E-K. -E -K. So hopefully it's still live. <laughs> All right, uh, any more stocks you guys want to talk about? Anything you want to talk about real quick? Going once, going twice. Well, obviously I want to thank everybody for attending tonight. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule thanks to youtube people i appreciate you showing up tonight anything unanswered david dave landry.com i think i'll see 
most of you guys that are here tonight and girls tomorrow on Facebook because you're in the Facebook group. Everybody else, have a great Memorial Day. Enjoy your weekend. And next week probably won't do a show. It's a little hard to put the show put a show together on holiday week. So we'll skip next week and then we'll pick up the week after. Oh, you're welcome, Jeff. Thanks for attending. I appreciate it. So again, thanks everyone and may the trend be with you. Thank you so much.